What's up guys, we are back with another Super 7 review, taking a look at two entries in the Super Cyborg line. So we're taking a look today at some Transformer stuff. We have got Optimus Prime, and of course, We've got Megatron, too. You can't do one without the other, so we might as well do them at the same time. We've got them both here in the sort of standard packaging for this line. So, of course, it's a larger format box because these guys are about 11 inches tall. You've got the figure in the window. It's all very vintage G1-inspired packaging. So you've got that checkerboard pattern, uh, vintage artwork in the corner. You've got a layout of the figure on one side panel. The other side panel gives you a bunch of instructions on how to change out weapons, how to remove the chest panels, and then the back of the box gives you kind of a working layout of how this quote-unquote cyborg works and all of the parts and pieces that go along with them. So yeah, cool packaging, great presentation. It's very vintage look and feel. I very much dig it. So let's pull them out and take a look. And here we are out of the package, our Super Cyborg Optimus and Megatron figures from the, of course, Transformers line. So this is the second set of non-transforming Transformer figures that I've gotten to take a look at in a few months. What a crazy time to be a Transformers fan that doesn't really care about transforming gimmicks. This is good stuff. So yeah, I'm pretty excited to take a look at these guys because oh, I mentioned it in the Cobra Bat review that I've been looking at this stuff for a while and these are, of course, the ones that have been out. So it's cool to finally get a chance to take a look at them. Uh, they were, of course, provided uh, for review by Super 7, but let's get started. Take a look at each of them. They are they're similar, but of course obviously very different in terms of design. So we're going to take a look at each one individually, and we're going to start with we're going to start with the good guy. We're going to start with Optimus, and then we'll get around to Megatron. So when it comes to articulation for these guys, they are of course meant to mimic vintage Japanese style toys in many respects. Uh, we're talking things like henshin cyborg stuff of that nature. So minimally articulated. So they're not going to do a whole lot. They are mostly just going to swivel various parts to get them to have a little bit of uh, character and then they're going to stand around, which is fine. That's what's advertised and that's what we get. So the head can rotate at the base of the head, the neck area. The arms rotate around. You've got swiveling wrists, and then you've got swiveling uh, legs, but they swivel at the knee here. So the Cobra Bat had a, uh, a swiveling ankle, which doesn't really make much sense because of, you know, just the nature of Transformers. So these guys get knees. They don't do a whole lot, which is fine. I like the idea behind it anyway. And you can get Optimus into a pose with his gun to have it actually being brandished, being used. And he looks pretty good that way. They don't, Again, they don't really do a whole lot, but again, that's what I expected. Visually, I think there's a lot to like here. It's very, very simplistic when it comes to the overall design. It's obviously a very G1-inspired Optimus Prime, but it's it's basically what you expect to see out of this form factor for this character. So, you know, you've got your, your semi-cab here for the chest with the translucent windows, and we'll get to that in a second. You've got some sculpt work for the grill down here on the crotch area, and then you've got the line work on the legs, and then of course all the vents that are down here on the uh, the shins. The back is pretty bare bones, which I kind of expect as well, but it's again, a very G1 inspired color scheme with the red, the sort of off white gray color, and then blue and yellow accents. I do think he looks really good. The head is nicely sculpted. Uh, I just get a very vintagey, uh, old style cartoon, G1 Optimus Prime feel. They do, both Optimus and Megatron, actually both evoke the same imagery that I get out of the Reaction Transformers figures. So it seems like they play off of each other in terms of those overall designs, which, I mean, there's no reason why they shouldn't. Uh, it's just something that I think of when I see these. When I had them in hand, I realized that, yeah, they kind of look very, very similar in many ways uh, to the Reaction figures. And then, of course, you know, you've got... Uh, different style hands for this guy. So you've got a fist on his left, you've got a gripping hand on his right, and I figured I might as well go ahead and talk about it. So you've got his big uh, blaster here. It's just done up in black plastic. There's no paint on it. Uh, very much a vintage look and feel. So it's exactly what he should have. I will say that this hand is kind of tight. Uh, I'm reticent almost to, to take this out because it's it's a very tight fit, snug fit for the gun, but he does hold it really well. It's certainly not, uh, certainly not going anywhere. And then we can uh, pop the cab off the front and you've got his innards there 
And he's, of course, got the Matrix inside of him. And there is a ton of stuff crammed into this. And I say stuff because, frankly, I have no idea what any of this is truly supposed to be. But it's all very uh, vintage cyborg, android kind of circuitry, doodad mechanisms all over the place. So tons of little sculpted detail. I mean, like this part right here, like almost like a radiator, basically. All fully textured. So it's all sculpted individually, like little, uh, little slots in there. And then you've got tons, tons of paintwork. There's a ton of paint applications. There's far more inside this guy uh, than there are outside. And I think the Matrix looks really good. It's not removable. It's, it's, uh, it's a piece that's part of him, so it's not going anywhere. But it does look really nice. So this very orange, green, blue color scheme uh, kind of clashes almost with a lot of the red on the outside of the figure. But there's a ton of stuff going on in here. And you can, of course, uh, see some of it through the chest, but you have to really take him apart to appreciate what exactly is going on inside there. Now, as far as Megatron goes, he is as articulated as Optimus and really in the exact same way. So you've got a head that can swivel around. We've got rotating arms. We've got our swiveling wrists. And then you've got uh, swiveling knees. So he is exactly the same. Makes perfect sense. There's no reason why they would really have to be different. I kind of wish there was some way to do something with this arm to rotate it a little bit to get the gun to be a little bit more positioned in that it's like over the arm rather than to the side. Granted, this looks fine and is not inaccurate in any way, but I just kind of wish it might be able to do it a little bit more. But to keep in line with the vintage aesthetic and theme here, he is as articulated, I mean, really as he needs to be and uh, moves well enough. You again, just can't do much more with these guys than just sort of have them standing, looming menacingly over the rest of your inferior smaller figures. As far as the overall design and everything, though, I'd say Megatron is probably my favorite of the two. Uh, it's not just because I like Megatron more. You know, I love the villains, generally speaking. And Megatron, I've always preferred over Optimus pretty much forever. Uh, so I do like his design. This is another instance, like I said, with Optimus, that he looks really, really similar to the reaction figure. It makes me, it makes me wish that I had them uh, right now to do a real in-hand comparison, but they do look really, really close. So you've got mostly a figure that is just cast in this kind of gray plastic with various accents here and there. Of course, the legs are different. They're a separate piece, so they get the darker gray. He's got two fists out of the box, and that, well, that's total. He doesn't have anything extra. You've got a little control panel with some paint on it there, and then he's got red on the inside of his joints, so at the abdomen and then within his elbows as well. He does have the cannon on his back, but it doesn't do anything. Uh, there is no moving part here. It's just a sculpted piece that's attached to the back, and then he does have his uh, cannon. This is a separate piece, so you can take it off if you don't want it on there, uh, but you've got his actual uh, cannon, you know, the barrel of his gun and the sight when he transforms. It's just done up in black plastic. Again, well, it's kind of an off, off gray black with a little bit of red paint accent there as well. So it's incredibly large. I mean, it's a very, very big gun. It's it's honestly larger than his actual arm, which I does, which I do think looks really good. And then you've got the head sculpt with a little bit of paint. You've got the eyebrows and then his red eyes, which I think look really nice. The sculpt is really angular, very classic Megatron when it comes to G1 stuff, the cartoon, things like that. And then you can pop his torso off. And just like Optimus, I mean, there is a ton of stuff in here. He doesn't have a matrix in there, but he does have a lot of other stuff that is different from Optimus as well. So it's certainly not the same. You've got, you know, the connections for the shoulders, connections for the legs down here. And then he's got a very, I think a very Megatron Decepticon kind of color scheme going on. So you've got red to play off the accents of the red on the figure itself. Purple, of course, because he is a Decepticon. And then you've just got some yellow and black to sort of fill things out and make it look pretty just wild in there. So again, tons and tons of sculpt crammed in here. You unfortunately can't see his. I do like the clear aesthetic when it comes to things like the Cobra Bat and then Optimus, just to be able to see a glimpse of that stuff in there. But it's also cool in many ways to take that off and you've got a different way to display this guy and just know that there's, there's I guess I'm gonna say it, more than meets the eye to this figure. So yeah, these guys are pretty cool. Just like with the Cobra Bat, it's something that you have to really see to, I guess, maybe appreciate them a little more. And this comes from someone who doesn't really collect a lot of stuff that's specifically like this. I've wanted to take a look at these for quite a while just because they're different and because they do seem like they're something that I'd be interested in. And turns out I'm right. Look at that, I like a bunch of weird toys. So yeah, I've had a lot of fun with both of these. I'm, I'm not the biggest Transformers collector, I've said that time and again, but 
I am really interested in robot mode Transformer toys. So things like the Transformers Redline from Hasbro is right up my alley, and stuff like this is right up my alley because now I have two slightly larger Transformer figures that are going to scale pretty well with other six inch figures that kind of go with them. So throw these guys with like, you know, Thundercats or Turtles or Motu stuff, they're going to be larger than life kind of characters, and they're still going to look pretty good alongside other figures standing there in the background being these big kind of heavy hitter characters. So I'm pretty happy with the way these guys turned out. Sculpt is really wild, especially on those uh, innards there for sure. So that's going to do it for this look at the Super 7, Super Cyborg, Optimus, and Megatron. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.